could be our issue right there. Now let me see. Hey, um, say something. Hi, something. Things are happening, and I hope they're good things. Hello to How about you on this microphone? and your friends this, out there. This, this microphone is everything. Refresh the page uh, so no sound you know, is my night. No, uh, okay, so David says possibly now. Sound? Oh, now oh. there's sound? Savo says he could hear me. I can hear Spencer. Maybe it's yes, coming we can hear now. Now, yeah. yay! So, okay, great. All right, so. We are we doing great. Yo, let's, we're, we're let's replay doing, the intro. Okay, we're going to start the fuck over. We're starting over. We're sorry. We're starting Yo, over. Do, this yeah, counts just, as a do-over. This is a do-over. 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 Hooray, cool. So, do-over. Sexy shoes, sexy shoes, sexy shoes. Sexy shoes, sexy shoes, sexy shoes. Sexy shoes. Hey, we, we have a brand new intro, sexy. and we worked on it all weekend, and it's super cool. We're and play thank again. you to what's it? To, uh, nice guys. Yeah, thank you. Wait, nice it says nope, went away just before we do this. Yeah, oh sound. my god. No, no, we have sound. It says yes. All right, there's Yay. sound. Yes, okay, go. Confirmed. We're starting over. Okay, good. Goodbye. Seriously, please comment below. If you can hear us, tell us how the hell you're doing, because yeah. we would really appreciate that. We'd love that. to know. Oh, We'd love to know. Okay, okay. So, so a as we know, as you know, we are streaming from DOS Co-op in beautiful downtown Fort Myers, and we're sponsored by Sexy Shoes. 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 So, uh, yeah, we want to know how you're doing, and how yeah, are you doing? Yeah, I am, you know... I'm going with the flow. Li too. Life is a roller coaster, y'all. Let's just ride that bitch. I'm right with you. I'm riding the roller coaster with you. In, in that case, long. Sexy shoes, sexy shoes. so we're doing well. Yeah. So we're going to move on to the next segment. Wait, but. Which is what are you listening to? What are you listening to? If you guys are listening to any local bands or new music that you like, let us know. Drop um, it in the comments. You'll be proud. I found some synthwave shit that I really like. Cool. Yes. So I found a song specifically that like makes me feel shit, you know, it makes you feel those emotions. Of course, there's no singing, but it made me feel things, which is great. So I found um, Thomas Ferrandon and the song is called The Quiet Earth and it's really magical and I really like it and I've been listening to his uh, playlist on Spotify like a lot. Cool. Yeah. So what are you fun. listening to? Um, well, I think I saw some, I heard some of that the other day when we were at Olivia's yeah. house. Yeah. yeah. We, we were in the pool and stuff, and that sounded really cool. Um, I, I said this last week, but uh, I'll say it again. Um, last last week or a couple weeks back, one of my favorite bands, Mannequin Pussy, started releasing singles off of their upcoming record. And now they just released their, uh, their second full length, which is called Patience. And I believe that the uh, the reason the album is called that is because it took them like two years to actually oh, uh, finish the record. But um, it's really, really good. It's on Spotify and all that stuff. So go check out Mannequin Pussy's new album, Patience, because I, I really I love them. Shit. That huge, sounds huge awesome. Huge fucking inspo. Like hella, hella inspo. She even plays out of, out of a twin reverb, just like me. Oh, so cool. That makes me really happy. That's yeah. awesome. So, Anyone listening to anything good, you can drop it in the comments and we'll mention it. I'm so glad that we have some comments here. Um, uh, David is talking about his Tuesday. Tuesdays suck at the office, and I really <laughs> look forward to this. Thank you so much. We work uh, very hard on this show each week, so we're so glad that there are people who like to tune in and check it out. So thank you so much for that. John Clay, doing a hell of a lot better now that I can hear you. Thanks, Woo! John. We yeah, thank you. you very much. I mean, I, you can probably, you know turn the sound off and still enjoy us. But you know, we like for you to hear us too. 
Um, John Clay, Simon Says Nothing is killing it, in my opinion. So that must be a band, Simon Says Nothing. I'm pretty um, sure. Aren't they local? I, I think yeah, they I think so. I think, I think they are, right? Simon Says Nothing is, is a local band. Someone local confirm and den- or deny, please. Confirm or deny. Um, I feel like a dumbass. Yeah, <laughs> I feel I like think, they're local, I right? I feel like they, uh, they might be, but I don't know. We um, can't all be experts on everything. That's true. That's How does somebody get to the page to watch? And, and Sonia says... Uh, she found Rez, which is a refound Rez. So I guess Rez is a band or an artist, and I'm gonna look that, that up. And check yeah, it out. Too. Thank you for the recommendations, everybody. All right, we're gonna move on to the next segment, which is Southwest Florida doesn't suck, and Ow. this is all the events that you can go to from Thursday till Sunday. Um, so uh, we're gonna start with Thursday, which I'm actually like. Once I saw the title of this album, I was like, all right, it's definitely going in. Um, Sea Graves is uh, releasing Separation of Church and State. So this is a release show with Year Glow and James Moore. This is gonna be at Nice Guys Pizza, 8 p.m., and they're taking a $5 donation at the door. Um, support local artists, support local bands, especially like because there's an album release on a Thursday, I think that's really cool. So go check out Sea Grapes. Um, Friday, June 28th, there's gonna be Sunset Yoga at Vanderbilt Beach. This is 7 to 8 p.m. Um, you're going to meet at the beach entrance, and all you really need to do is bring a towel and some water and probably a donation for the instructor. Um, and then Saturday, June 29th, Emerald Vision is releasing their album, Alien. I'm very excited for this, and I, I think a lot of people in the Southwest Florida community will be. Um, they're going to be playing with the Kimberleys in Cough and Varnish at Rackham Cape Coral, no cover, 21 plus. And for Sunday, June 30th, um, as far as we know, there's not any crazy shit happening this Sunday. So uh, here's a reminder to take a day to yourself to relax or, you know, uh, get lit because it's the summertime. And uh, and that's pretty much all that we have for this week. So Awesome. And I did the drawing. There. I said it. I did it. I'm an artist in my own way. Uh, <laughs> and I like to promote recycling at the beach and just recycling, period, and not leaving trash on the beach, because I think it's the, the nice thing to do. So don't kill the, uh, the sea creatures and the environment there, also a PSA. All right, cool. Woo! Cool. All right, so for our next segment, we are going to talk about our featured artists. All of our featured artists come from Das Co-op, and today we are going to be talking about Ocasio Casa. Jeff and Dale Ocasio are a husband and wife who design and create their artwork collaboratively. They make sculptured and digital works that express an imaginative imaginative storybook script. You can check out their website at ocasiocasa.com. And while you're doing that, also you might want to watch this video that our lovely producer, Spencer, put together for us. Take it away. I think it's Ocasio. Video Spence, uh, that was um, the Ocasio Casa 
and you can see them at acasiocasa.com and you can also visit DAS to check out their work and purchase anything that you would like. I like seeing some of these comments like um, Vanessa Halveston says that she has one of their pieces and she loves it and I think that's really cool. Um, and then we have another comment, I hope I'm saying this right, Estu, uh, I approve of that drawing being awesome art. You guys are awesome, by the way. Thank you, thank you. You're all awesome. Esau? Actually, yes, Esau? an amazing, Esau? Esau? yes, an amazing artist also as well. Aww. Yes, yes, incredible artist. Cool. Yeah, well, we might have to feature them. Yes, yes that's yes, so we'll cool. That. Okay, so now we're going to launch into the final segment of our show, which is our topic. And this week we decided to do conflict resolution. Um, this is kind of a special episode. We decided to bring in two folks that we thought we'd give the opportunity to to resolve a conflict face to face and in person. Um, this is some video footage that we shot uh, over the weekend and we wanted to share it with you guys as part of our conversation tonight. So um, the first clip is, uh, and, and let me introduce these folks first, okay? So we have uh, Frank Sizzle and we also have Denver Dorsey slash Ava Garden. So uh, these individuals joined us over the weekend and uh, we had the opportunity to let them speak with each other and share their experiences. So we're gonna show a couple of clips from the uh, interview and we will also talk about it. So first we're gonna show um, Frank talking a little bit about stereotypes and how that uh, influenced his experiences and his identity. For a male, you have to, you got to provide for the household, you have to, uh, your, your job has to be higher paying than the woman's. I mean, according to these things that, you know, that we're taught and what was passed down, passed down from the, you know, the older heads. And uh, that's not the case sometimes, you know? And uh, so I feel like if a male doesn't, meet those expectations maybe that male doesn't feel like he's accomplishing 150 percent and that can that right there can itself in, in turn fuck with that person you know what i'm saying like emotionally it can you know um so i feel like it, it can affect everybody and just in a different way because you know from the different ways that we were raised it's just gonna hit everybody but it's gonna hit you regardless. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that there's no need for those uh, stereotypes. Stereotypes need to go away. Like we're we're changing, you know. Our, we're growing as people, so they do need to be done away with, and in order for people to look through the same glasses, you know. Because not everybody's always gonna have that stereotype. Look, I can't talk to that person because you know they dress that way. I can't talk to that person because of the way they speak. Like. That shit is fucked up when we're all people. So we were we gave both folks the opportunity to describe their experiences with the same thing. So we heard from Frank about how stereotypes impacted his experiences and uh, his identity. And now we're going to hear from Denver Ava and how uh, stereotypes impacted their experience and their identity. So check this out to so many fucking boxes, like, um, too feminine, you know, from such a young age, like, he's playing, uh, with dolls, you know, like, and throwing them away, and, like, it being an issue, um, you know, being sensitive, um, being too feminine, um, having a high-pitched voice, uh, being gay, being a faggot, being queer, being you know, all of these things, and people that want that, that straight man image that are just, like, so in denial about their feelings, like, that I just get to be, like, some form of, like, a uh, way they can take out that anger, and, like, it's, like, it devalues you. You're okay, so now we had the opportunity to hear from both Frank and Denver Ava. So now we're going to ask a question. Do you think learning about someone's experience can help you resolve conflict? So we want the audience to join us in on this, and, and we're going to start off the conversation, of course. And please, you know, share what you think. So um, I definitely think that, um, mm -hmm. you know, part of the reason why we tried to give Frank and Denver Ava the opportunity to come in and talk to each other face to face is because 
a lot of times if you give people the opportunity to talk about who they are and you create some kind of understanding so that that is the biggest thing to me yeah. creating the understanding you know I agree um, I also first off I would just like to thank um, Denver Ava and Frank for coming in and even having the discussion yeah and also I think it was really great that you got to like sit in and ask questions and, and talk to them um, I just think it's really great that they they came and they met face to face and they did talk about their experiences and um, I, I think it's important to know those things and to have empathy and to be able to put yourself in the other person's shoes mm -hmm. so yeah yeah and, and our, our producers do y'all have anything you want to add here yeah 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 this is a pretty important topic to me uh, putting myself in other people's shoes is something that I'm striving to uh, accomplish in my new uh, in my new goals is for self-love and respecting other people but just like outside of that as well it's like the, we are all one human race and we all have this one blue orb as far as we know to survive on and all this conflict and all these different tribes and all these different like things that put us all in these different boxes are just kind of built to keep us apart and keep us from actually understanding and loving each other and like that's something that I feel like everybody should take a look at in their own life and the judgment that I have put on other people over the years is, is freaking insane and I'm coming out of that today and understanding that I need to like really dig in and see what other people are going through and understand it and respect it and love it so that I can love myself and so that I can love other people, join with other people and build something worth building in this world that we desperately need and that's just camaraderie. We just need to like band together because we have this one place to live and sleep and breathe and it's like we're just destroying it we're destroying it and we're destroying each other in the process and that's the pro that's that's the basis of the problem if we can stop destroying each other we can start loving each other we can start understanding each other we can start helping each other we can start teaching each other something different something new because what's happening right now is not fucking working preach Dang. preach Dang. brother Dang. yeah Brilliant. well it's just it's it's exactly that i mean like we Everything around us is trying to divide us. You know, we're being told that we're divided by by race, by gender, by sex, by all of these different things, and we we all bleed the same blood, as, as Frankie says. It's yeah, like we bleed red. Yeah. yeah, and it's it sucks. I want to. I love diversity. I love the differences between all these people and when people use things quite like what they were talking about where it's like stereotypes in order to build barriers between people it's utterly destructive and uh, and it's not fair because painting everyone with the same color is like it's not fair because there's everyone is so nuanced from the person next to them you know and it a lot more people need a chance than are getting, I, uh, is all I'll say on that one. Okay, so I think this is a good time for us to now look at another set of clips. So we're going to go back and forth between these and have the opportunity to talk. Um, and I want to just address this uh, before, we, before we go forward. David asks, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'm curious to know if there is a resolution or a shake of hands between Denver, Ava, and Frank at the end. We will get there. So we do have a set of clips. So you will see a final clip there um, and you'll see what happens as part of uh, a resolution. Um, yeah, and as, that is funny. Vanessa points out that, Spencer, your hat says human. <laughs> I it. was just thinking that too. Yeah. I was thinking that. Which I, I, yes, is, is I am a rad. human. I think that's pretty rad. Um, yeah, so all right. So this next set of clips, um, uh. both uh, Frank and Denver Ava have the opportunity to talk about how some of these stereotypes might have uh, played a role in the conflict that ensued between them. So let's take a look at both of those. You get those aha moments where you're like, things just click in your head and like, I don't know, you hit those points where it just becomes more comfortable or more accepting. Just like, kind of like when people see drag for the first time and like you'll see drag and you'll be like, what the, that looks like a clown. And then you see so much of it that it actually, like, that same face you, like, well, oh, that's beautiful. Like, that's just something that you don't see that needs to be more um, public. 
And that's what Spectrum was, was a platform for Southwest Florida, which I'm from here, you know, we, I grew up here in the gay bars here, you know, so I wanted a space here where, God, we haven't had that. And I know the communities there working for like danger, danger and like going, this guy's so much like, it's here. Like, you know what I mean? Kids like need to explore. And I wanted it to not be at a gay bar because my experience growing up is just very touchy and inappropriate and not no consent. And I want it to be safe. I'm very big on not shaming anyone because exploring my sexuality in a homophobic family, I had to do some risky things to explore. And I felt very degraded and dirty for a lot of them for a long time. It's just a fucking shame. Like you don't have, cause like literally you're, you have this human experience on earth and the one thing you get to do is explore who you are, but then anyone who's queer gets shamed for it. And it's like sad because it stunts it and you have to seek different measurements or in ways to figure it out. And it's like, why can't we just have the one thing that like this life, like the one thing that we can figure out in this lifetime, you know, why the fuck we're here, you know, what the fuck this planet's doing, but like. What we do know is that we are all people, which I believe is what Denver Ava concluded that with. and. So I, I think that that is a, a great perspective to have. And now we're going to hear the other half of this. Uh, Frank will also have the opportunity to discuss um, their role in the conflict and how stereotypes and some of the things might have impacted them. Like, in, in a sense, like, it was fucked up. Like, it, it was just fucked up all around. Like, I, I should have done that shit. I ended. I did stereotype and since I did I like I reacted the way that I did and then after to try to defend it, what I stated I went even further into saying things that were even nastier that caused a lot of harm to a lot of people and towards things that I didn't understand you know fully understand and you learned it but that wasn't the way to learn you know I could instead of being judgmental, I could ask fucking questions, right? And I, I just didn't know how to go about that. I really did. Because me being a, a straight man running over to a gay man or a transgender, asking them what that's about and how that works, that doesn't seem right, you know, in the eyes of society. We're like, how does that, because of these boxes that we're talking about, it'll lead to the lack of communication. And with the lack of communication, ignorance unless research is done you know so yeah so this kind of elucidated some of the things that uh kind of informed the conflict between denver ava and frank um which was very apparent on our community we're not going to go back into that discussion but we are going to continue on with thinking about how we can have good conflict resolution. We have another question for In, our audience. Yes, yeah, so do you think it's important to have compassion when discussing highly emotional social issues? I would like for maybe you want to say? Yes, yeah. actually, yeah. I mean, I think it's important to have compassion. I think it's really important to, to just listen. Um, you don't know the hardships. Uh, you don't know what the lives that these, like any person comes from and what they overcome to be the person that they want to be. And that is so important. We are we live in a world where, where people will constantly tell you you're not good enough, and that uh, to hold back from being yourself. And I think it's super, you know, important to have compassion and to just listen to other people, you know. Yeah. So I do as well think that. Um, I I mean, I know that practicing compassion on a daily basis with everybody you come in contact with is a very hard thing. Just think about how many times you're in traffic or go to the grocery store and you have literally no compassion for anyone that you're in a conflict with, you know, in that moment. Even your friends and your family, like sometimes the trauma that gets dredged up by conversations or experiences can like just just absolutely annihilate your ability to have compassion for someone else's um, experiences. So. I, the, I think the biggest thing in conflict resolution is that just having empathy for someone else's experiences and really coming into the conversation with an open heart and an open mind. Yeah, um, that, yeah that's great. And that is just the most important aspect, you know. Um, and truthfully, like even just sitting in the conversation with the two of them yesterday, it definitely made me feel like they were listening to each other, that they were giving each other the opportunity 
to have compassion for one another and you know I just it, I felt good about the fact that they were like I said at least like you said actually at least able to sit down together yeah have a conversation mean. and you know even the ability and for allowing us to even put it on camera like come on right now like that's 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 huge. I have mad respect. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. I so have so respect huge. So I want to go to a couple of comments really quick. Um, so Paul Harmon yeah, has a comment that says, out. how do you get someone to believe that you, that you see a potential in them that they can't see? That's an interesting comment. I, I'm not sure about that. Do you have thoughts on that, uh, either of you? Uh, it's, I mean, depending on who it is, sometimes <laughs> Remind them all the time. Remind them every day. Sometimes uh, encouragement, you know, helps. Helps, yeah. Uh, because I think uh, oftentimes we're all human. We lose, you know, ourselves and sometimes forget. And like, like I, like I went through a hard time. And Spencer's like, "Come on, Batman, get out of the wheelchair. Let's go." You know. So it's. I think it's really important to surround yourself, you know, with uh, people who can be encouraging and loving. And yeah. I'd like to jump in with this one. Jump in. Um, I think that <laughs> seeing a pot potential in someone and reminding them of that is absolutely fantastic in order, if, if it is something that they're actually interested in. But when you see a potential in someone and it's not something that they're interested in, but you are, you put an expectation on them, instead of reminding them of their potential, you are reminding them that they are not living up to your expectations it's it's a it's a very fine line that you're walking with that because i'm you, learning that the hard way because you don't want to overwhelm people you don't want to be like oh man well you could do this if you just really wanted to if you really tried and there's a lot of people who just who who even just trying is hard and especially for people who are getting into something new say it's if we're an art podcast the video thing so with art, jumping into a new art form for a lot of people is a horrifying experience because we all want to be good at something the first try. And that's kind of, if it's potential that you see in them, be there every step of the process and remind them that like, you, you did it, you tried. Like that's that's the most important. And that's thing. more than like some people will ever do in their entire lives. And I, have, I am afflicted with that fear of failure and like, I hear so many people like or like Will Smith. I'll listen to like some Will Smith like Instagram stuff, and it's just like, don't be afraid to fail, fail and fail and fail and fail and fail again. Yeah, like, I do it. It just it is it's a new thing for me, and like I'm, my whole body's buzzing, so I know I'm onto something here. But like fucking fail, just try things because most people don't try anything, and that goes back to what we're talking about anyway with keeping an open mind. Because if you don't have an open mind, you're, you're just gonna you're gonna fail in life. You're not gonna you're not gonna try anything. So you're just gonna be stuck in this one box, in this one hole, in this one method your entire life. And that's not what you want. You want to grow. You want to change. You want to keep that open mind. You want to see other people's ways of living and breathing and, and and how they do it and how it makes them better people and become a better person yourself. So fail, do art, express yourself. <laughs> love other people. Love yourself. Well, you're both very compassionate. So, do, I mean, do you guys do you think it's important uh, to have compassion when discussing highly emotional social issues? Not with him. Oh, 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 no, oh yes, okay, absolutely okay, with okay, him. Uh, I don't, I don't understand. No, it's, uh, yes, absolutely. And you have to understand where, where it's just like it was that same thing that you were saying earlier, where it's just like with family members and stuff, with people that you were around a lot. You know, mm -hmm. you do also have to understand that. I think he's said it to me uh, quite a few times where it's just like sometimes brothers fight, you know, but it's like you need to just not lose, not lose that love for each other. Exactly. Because like if you're around somebody yeah. a lot, you feel resentful when you're not taking care of yourself because you're not taking care of yourself and you're putting that on somebody else mm -hmm. and you got to watch out for that. And that's mm -hmm. where the compassion comes into play. Yep. And like, I love this man and I love my friends, but sometimes I just get into a mode and I'm working on it and it all comes back to me and loving yourself. Love yourself. All right, so at this point, I think it would be a great opportunity now that we've talked a little bit about this to show the final clip. And in this final clip, um, Frank and Denver Ava had the opportunity to speak directly to one another. So there were a couple of things that I thought were you know, really poignant that the conversation included. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and show that final clip and then we'll have our, our final discussion about this topic. Let's see that. Why 
I don't know if it's just like straight men or like just like certain like groups of cisgender people, but like why are, are you so scared to just ask like a question? Like it just blows my mind that people just aren't like I don't understand why they're so uncomfortable with us that they can't even like inquire about what's going on. That would be because of miseducation, honestly. That's how I feel. Because since I wasn't properly taught about that, right? So this is how it is, this is how it's gonna be. Right? So I I feel like it's like a personal thing. So I, it's almost like I'm afraid to like I mean yes, you're right, you're right. Like afraid because how do I like begin to even grasp? You get what I'm saying? Like I, I so just, just how do you feel more comfortable um, in, insulting us, which is also a personal thing, instead of just like asking? Because you seem like comfortable doing that, you know. It it was more of a sarcasm. It, I wasn't trying to offend, honestly. It was more of a sarcasm thing, and that's why. Did you realize how deep that, that goes to us? But I, like I did not, and I'm sorry. That's the issue. That I had, that's the whole revelation. Because if, like, you would have read any of the reviews about Spectrum, it's like everyone's saying this was the first time they're like, they felt so safe and comfortable around their friends. And it was a yeah, and I think that that final clip kind of has the everything sort of wrapped up. So we, it was asked, like, was there a resolution? And, you know, and I, I was there for the conversation, obviously. And I, I will say that I felt as if uh, both people in the end did have a better understanding of each other's perspectives. It's still going to be hard because um, one party was deeply hurt by another and then a whole bunch of crazy shit happened after that. And I think that both people at least had the opportunity to kind of, you know, talk about how they felt and also express some things that maybe they've never asked anyone before. Like I, I like Denver Ava actually being able to ask a cis uh, per straight person, like, why can't you just ask us? Why can't yeah. you just ask us what's up? And I would say this, okay, so Frank's response, I feel like is definitely something that a lot of people are plagued with, a fear that they don't even know how to approach the conversation and therefore they don't have it. And then um, Denver Ava's response of, well, you felt comfortable insulting us, but you don't feel comfortable asking us. And I think that's an important point to bring out too. If you have an opinion on something that is uninformed, it's probably in your best interest to ask the question rather than make a statement. Let's just put it that way. You know, it's in the best interest of everyone. I mean, you know, why be scared to ask the question when it's a lot scarier to make an ignorant statement or an uneducated statement and then have all this incredible backlash from from every direction, literally every direction. Um, so I just had to add that. Um, and, and you know, maybe there, I didn't, you know, film a handshake or anything like that, but there was definitely a lot of aha moments and a, a lot of, um, I just think, a, a lot of unity in, in after the fact and understanding, which I think yeah. was the key, so. I respect them so much for coming and being in the same room and just talking about it, I really do. I th and, and I think because of it, you know, we all come out smarter and wiser because of it. So um, I'm really grateful that that, that, was, that was aired today. So. Yeah, I was too. <laughs> it was it was it was incredible because it yeah. was very like short notice and we rushed to do it because it, it had just happened and you know we put a lot of work into making it happen, which is part of the reason why we were a little late today. So thank you. But uh, <laughs> but you know, so we have one question left for our audience that we'd love for everybody to join in on if they can. And and we'll read some of these comments that have come through as well. Awesome. Yeah. So how can we have compassionate conflict resolution? Uh, that's a hard one. Do we, do we? How can we have compassionate conflict, conflict resolution? resolution? What do you think? <laughs> well, I got that in stereo. Um, <laughs> well, it's a lot of everything that we've been saying before. It's like being willing to get out of your own ass and open yourself up to the way that the fact that the way that you live your life is not the way that everyone else lives theirs. The experiences that you've experienced or not everyone else's, you know, there is, there's so many different ways you could walk this earth, but on top of that, things that could have happened to you that could have changed the way that you react to specific things. I mean, uh, 
people want to use the word like a lot of people a lot of assholes use the word triggered a lot in a uh, what's the term? mocking in a mocking sense but there are a lot of things there are a lot of words that I will not say because I know the way that it will because I know that I've hurt people by just bringing up things before and I watch my words because because I don't want to hurt anyone and I think deep down none of us want to hurt anyone I think we all want to end this life with a bunch of friends and a bunch of family that love us and we don't want to leave knowing that we have pissed off half of the world you know and the sad truth is that for a lot of us simply existing pisses people off and I could say that as a gay male and it sucks and it sucks but 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 fuck it man it's like if you're gonna fucking li- if you're gonna live fucking live and if, if you want to resolve conflicts with someone be willing to be willing to level with them be w- if if what i am asking for right now is compassion and for people to accept me for who i am then i myself have to be willing to fucking walk that walk too so when i get confronted with an opposing viewpoint or someone who is saying something that could be hurtful to me in any sort of way i have to understand that maybe there is something going on there because i don't think most people want to hurt someone else so instead of being reactionary to something that happens sit down with someone talk to them Talk to them face to face because we all get behind these little keyboards and our dick is fucking 12 feet long. And all of a sudden we're like the toughest thing with two legs and it sucks because all of a sudden people start talking big and they start dividing and putting up walls between us. And that is the last thing that we need right now because if we don't want to get conquered, don't let them divide and conquer. It's the first half of the thing. So, I don't know. That's... Let's, oh. go to, let's go to some comments. <laughs> okay. Let's go to Sorry. Some comments. No, that, was, that was fucking dope. Very well well, so well done. Very well yeah, done. for sure. Thank you. Um, so I want to go to a few comments. We'll, we're going to go back up the list here. I just want to say you're welcome to Paul Harmon, first of all. Um, and uh, Sonia said, um, it is because nothing is one-sided. So, you know, having hearing both sides and being compassionate. And Xavier has a Xavier comment. Xavier says, uh, I have to give credit to Frank and how humble he was in open uh, to talk about it in front of the camera that shows that he is receptive and I actually yeah I agree with that 100% and um, I think they were both that way yeah, you know was, I just remember like you know like I said like some sometimes trauma is so great and the experiences that we've had in the past are so difficult and they get brought up so easily and so for either of them to even have been there is like fucking dope like mm-hmm. I have re- the utmost respect for both of them yeah. for having you know been been willing to participate Vanessa Halveston says I believe that tough love is important as long as it's full of real love and support and okay. she also says compassion is loving through differences Con- uh, differences conditioned thinking is poisonous and can be grown out of with open conversation so you can grow out of it with open conversation yep um, and you're welcome. We thank you for enjoying that we we're sharing it. Why don't we read this comment from Michelle? Michelle, I, I love Michelle. Will, I know. I love, we all love Michelle. I think one way to find Michelle. compassion for someone other than yourself, no matter how different they are from you, is to have empathy. I love that. Understanding what someone is feeling because we all feel things. Dang it, <laughs> is one uh, one way to find common ground. No one wants to feel like crap, and I agree with you. I think and I I think empathy plays a big part of. Um, compassionate conflict resolution is just like being able to to feel things and some people feel it more just just to take the time to understand yeah it's really important I agree um, and and David Acevedo says the key for conflict resolution is communication yes and that's the number one reason why we reached out to these two folks we had no idea whether or not they would reach out to each other on their own but we took it upon ourselves because truthfully we just saw so much of the community being, two friends of ours right two friends of ours people and so many people other people in the community kind of being ripped apart by the conversations that were being had and and i just i just like i really just wanted to provide some healing i that's really all that we were trying to do so and i think compassion is the number one 
uh, thing to do, you know, for healing. So, um, and this is from my best friend who is across in San Francisco watching this. And I, I do love her very much. Thank you, Rebecca. Recognizing your privileges, perceptions, and sensitivities while embracing your discomfort of vulnerability and failures. Wow, Jesus fucking Christ. That's why this bitch is my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, compassion for self and others. Remember that it is okay to take a space and a break when things get tough and come back when you're emotionally ready, but come back. Bitch, I love That's you. Awesome. Um, why are you going to make me cry right she's, now? She is an art therapist, so she's got a one-up on all of us. Um, yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, you know... Um, and, and she says, love seeing community come together to support the community. And that's exactly what we did. This, yeah. this is the community. This is, that's what Talking Tough is all about. And, you know, and someone, and I will say, Angel had tagged us and was like, we want to see this, you know, and a lot of people in that conversation who maybe were even just like bird's eye viewing the whole thing and weren't even participating liked that comment. And so we didn't do this because we were like, oh, you know, we want to show this off or whatever. It was because people were asking us to provide this and we didn't know whether these two people would do this on their own and we thought why not give them the opportunity and if they're willing to have it you know a platform, a platform to show it to the entire community so we have another comment here uh, Adam Hood education what you all are doing right now is where the process begins for us all to understand each other thank Aww. you, thank you very much for that we really appreciate that oh yeah I also like I, I also think uh, you know Denver and Fran they're, they're two different artists also you know and artists that we all love in this community so to see them you know come together and resolve this and talk about it and everything uh for me was like really um uplifting and gives me hope for humanity you know to see like these two people you know who've grown up and had different experiences to, to come together and and understand each other yeah and to me it, it meant a lot can, I, can I, I just blow you real quick angela for yeah. like wow dude like this is awesome that's awesome <laughs> that they got that opportunity to like speak like i didn't even know what the hell was going on like i just showed up and like oh we did this cool thing and like yeah that is the beginning of something real this is that this, that's the beginning of something real and you gave you gave them a platform to have open communication and show people that it's possible to communicate and come together even from such separate backgrounds. Well, That's so fucking cool, dude. And what is it uh, I've heard before, and I'll probably be butching this, but like what it, it takes a a village to raise a child. Mm, yeah. It takes a village. And that's what we want to build. This is my village. Right? That's what we want to build. Like, uh, Become part of the village. Yes. We the village people. Oh, they were kind of problematic. Come, I think come there's. Back over uh, us, oh, sorry. We have more comments. Uh, uh, Adam also said uh, each individual has to be open minded to receive the education. That's true. I would 100% agree, agree with that. With that. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and I laid out ground rules. Oh, Jesse. Uh, and I was basically like, you guys have to be able to be open minded and both participate openly in this conversation. Angel, thank you. Yes, thank you, Angel. And, um, Jesse says- I love Jesse Kaysen. Oh, wait, wait, I'm gonna switch over to me. Jesse Kaysen, is, Jesse Kaysen is my wife, and you better respect her because I love her so much, and that's my wife. And I just wanna remind you that she's my wife. Come back, you bitch. I'm shooting with Jesse. Yeah! Sorry, Jesse, sorry. Okay, but anyway, so let's, let's, you, let's go back. Empathy is huge. I firmly believe people who are lashing out at strangers on the internet do so out of a deep insecurity or self-esteem issue. It's easy to pile on and denigrate someone because it'll make you feel righteous and right. I'm guilty of that sometimes, which I know. Um, but finding the humanity in the other person and having humility. the humility oh, to recognize where you might be wrong or misunderstood is the right thing to do. Yes. Um, and, and I totally agree with that too. I, I will say this, like a couple months back, I had this experience where after the uh, ab um, abortion legislation passed in um, the South, I you know shared a, a Facebook, uh, not a Facebook post, but a, um, an article about it and went to bed and then woke up the next morning and saw that someone I didn't know had left a comment that was really incendiary saying like, well, I think that, you know, that, that it's kind of good because girls, you know, are using this as birth control. Maybe they won't be so slutty. And this is, this is a, a, was a girl, a female identifying person. And so, um, and my friends came in and just like started to talk to that person. And then I came in in the morning and tried to be nice. And then the, the, it, the conversation didn't go anywhere. So I was like, bitch, fuck you, get out of my shit. Like immediately was just like, I don't fucking know you, step the fuck off. And you know, and I don't know that I feel great about that. You know what I mean? Like 
I, you know, maybe if she and her, she and I had been face to face, maybe I wouldn't have behaved that way. But I also am known to tell a bitch to step off in person, so I'm but not necessarily also, sure. That also may have been a person who, you know, isn't open minded, and I think that's the hard part. Is there right. are people who are not open minded, or people who are willing to listen? And the internet makes um, you close minded. Yeah, a lot of times. Often, yeah. So you like are able to stay on top of yourself unless you use it correctly. Right. So, okay, well, I think we've really covered a lot of ground here, and I'm really happy that everybody stuck around for this, and I hope that you'll share this video, even though we had some technical difficulties at first. We'll post the time that you should start <laughs> in order to rewatch the intro and, and go through the episode, but, like, we're really <laughs> happy. The intro. <laughs> we're happy that you all uh, tuned in and that you paid attention to this, and we will, we, you know, leave comments. We'd love to hear feedback about this. Um, you know, this is something that we're gonna try to do more often if we can mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so you know thank you yeah so and also huge thanks to our sponsors uh sexy shoes thank you das uh for for having us uh live stream here also thank you to our producers yes Spencer, Spencer and Hugh Robbie. Robbie. Um, i also want to throw in a thank you to nice guys pizza for letting yes. us shoot um, yeah. a beautiful intro uh at their space and um yeah, that's it. Everyone's saying that you need to end the show with the intro. Are yeah. You, are you able to do that? Do you guys want to um, do Why don't you guys just watch Play the intro. No, why don't you guys just watch it. next play week? It. Play you it. can play just it. see play this next week. Take no shit. Unless it's on my chest.